through our patent-pending technology, C3's biopropane will compete with traditionally derived fossil propane, offering a chemically identical product at the similar price with the added benefits of being locally and domestically produced, completely renewable, and environmentally friendly. So to date, you've probably heard a lot about biofuels. We have bio replacements for the two largest liquid fuels on the market. We have ethanol, which is a replacement for gasoline, and we have biodiesel, which is a replacement for diesel. What you probably haven't heard a lot about is a bio replacement for the third largest liquid fuel on the market, which is propane, or LPG. And that's largely because there is no economic competitive process to get us, get us to biopropane. Well, we at C3 are changing that. We have developed a process that we believe will become the first economic competitive source of biopropane, which offers not only a significant societal benefit, but also a significant business opportunity. This business opportunity is driven by several factors, the first of which is the large market that we've talked about. Again, we're talking about a chemically identical product, meaning anywhere propane is used today, C3's biopropane can also be used. It's also a large and growing market um, on a global scale. As was mentioned by Bagazzo, propane is usually the first fuel that developing countries move to once they stop burning wood and dung and maybe some of these uh, charcoal from waste products that Bagazzo is making. The second part of the opportunity is uh, the, the large support that we're seeing for biofuels, both within the U.S. and abroad. This has manifested itself in the U.S. in strong federal and state supports in the forms of the renewable fuel standards, as well as blenders credits, along with um, loan guarantees, as well as grants for new technologies coming online. The third part of this opportunity is the distribution arbitrage, which C3 presents. Now, currently, propane is used largely as a residential and commercial heating fuel when you're off the natural gas pipeline, which means it has a very distributed consumption model. This contrasts with the current concentrated production model, where most of the propane in the U.S. is produced in the Gulf region, and all of our uh, propane imports also largely come through, the propane, or come through the Gulf region, and we pay to ship it all over the U.S. What C3 is proposing here is a distributed production model to match up with the consumption patterns. What we're envisioning here is that we would not only source our feedstocks from a tight radius around our plant, but we'd also distribute our product to the end customer, which would also be in a tight radius around our plant. This allows us to capture the dollars that have traditionally gone to transportation and distribution. The last part about, about the opportunity which I want to tell you about is the, the proprietary technology and that what, what that brings us. It brings us very favorable economics. Um, when we're looking at gross margins and returns, we have, uh, we have metrics that compare very favorably to the ethanol process with some key assumptions. So the first key assumption that I want to bring out is that we're assuming the extension of biofuel supports. Currently, we have that blender's credit that I, mentioned, that I mentioned before, which is in place for both ethanol and biodiesel, which are the only commercially produced biofuels on the market today. Um, this does not exist for propane yet, but we are actively engaged with the National Propane Gas Association, as well as the National Corn Growers Association, to make sure that this happens. Other key assumptions are that we're using corn feedstock in the U.S., as well as a 50 million gallon per year facility, which is what economies of scale are dictating, both for the ethanol process as well as C3s. The other piece that our proprietary technology allows us is much greater control over supply. So in the ethanol market, we have very low barriers to entry, very well-known technology that's been around for thousands of years. What this means was, once there was an economic opportunity created, we had a huge surge in capacity, and we're actually entering into an oversupply situation where futures prices are reflecting uh, a buyer's market for ethanol. Well, again, C3's technology is the only known um, competitively viable source of biopropane that's coming to the market. We also have strong IP protection, and this gives us much higher barriers to entry and uh, much greater control over the supply and demand characteristics of the market of biopropane going forward. A little bit about the team. My name is Tracy Matthews again. I'm heading up business development. I have a background in engineering, although I spent the last two years at the Harvard Business School. I have been concentrating on biofuels, doing projects on the biodiesel as well as cellulosic ethanol side. My two teammates are coming out of the chemical engineering departments of MIT. They are both fourth-year PhD students studying the biomass conversion to biofuels. Andrew Peterson is coming out of Jeff Tester's lab and is concentrating on hydrothermal technologies, including the one used in C3. And Kurt Fisher is coming out of Greg Stephanopoulos' lab, uh, concentrating on the, the biochemical reactions of biomass to biofuels. They are the sole inventors of C3's proprietary process. Now, our production process looks a lot like the ethanol process in that we begin with fermentable sugars, and we can use a variety of feedstocks to get us there. Where we differ is in the yellow box you see here. Whereas ethanol is a, uh, is a fermentation step followed by distillation, our process is a fermentation step followed by hydrothermal. The fermentation step is well known, 
hydrothermal the hydrothermal technologies are less well known and innovative although they have been shown both in the lab scale as well as industrial to be to be very effective means of chemical conversion now the key metric when looking at uh, biofuels production processes are is, is really the net energy balance that tells us what we bring to the table in terms of what we're doing to increase energy security and also to, to lower our carbon emissions as well as it plays into certainly our economic costs as well Whereas ethanol, there's some debate on whether that is a net positive or a net negative. Our best estimate coming out of an MIT PH thesis that was done particularly on this topic gives us a net energy balance of 1.1 or something that's slightly positive for ethanol in the U.S. Using the same assumption for our process, we have a net energy balance which is 1.4 to 1.7, something that is much more favorable compared to the ethanol process. This is because we get more BTUs coming out of a bushel of corn or a ton of sugar cane. At the same time, we have lower energy requirements, largely because our propane naturally phase separates from water and we don't have to pay the expensive distillation step. Now, this proprietary technology is, again, um, patent pending. We have submitted a patent through the MIT TLO, which covers this process. Uh, we've gone through a very robust patent search, uh, or sorry, prior art search, and we expect our claims to be broad in what we actually um, end up getting here. A couple of byproducts come out of the process and along with propane. These include distiller grains like you get out of the ethanol process, which will sell as animal feed. The second piece would be the hydrogen stream, which we plan on selling to a co-located third-party producer of anhydrous ammonia or uh, other common nitrogen fertilizers, which will also benefit from the same distribution arbitrage given that we'll be producing right in the same region where they'll be using these nitrogen fertilizers. So where are we now? We are in this pre-funding stage. We have shown our proof of concept. We have filed our patent, and we're currently in the labs optimizing our yield and rates. We're also refining our key assumptions and our market entry strategy. This is all to get us ready for our Series A funding, which will allow us to set up our own labs, also create an integrated pilot scale process, still at the lab scale, one to two liters per hour, something along that, but it will be fully integrated, and it will also allow for the design and siting of our demonstration facility. Our demonstration facility, we're looking for about $25 million for that, it will be the first large-scale facility where we're approving out both the technology as well as the business model um, for C3 process. During this process, we'll also be ensuring that we get the federal supports that we need to put us on a level playing field with the ethanol process and other biofuels that are out there. This will get us ready for our Series C, which is commercial rollout. We're showing here the uh, expenses or the, the capital required for four commercial plants. We think there's a lot of value creation and actually proving the process on a commercial scale with a number of feedstocks and a number of geographies. But obviously there is a lot of optionality when we look at when we're looking at a liquidity event. Also um, in terms of where we can find our financing, you know, there's obviously a lot of opportunities with uh, joint ventures as well as strategic partnerships going forward. A liquidity event here would be uh, either an IPO to raise equity for a continued expansion capacity expansion on our own, or a possible acquisition by either a large agricultural producer or a current large um, biofuels producer. So what I've told you today is, is largely the story of corn to propane in the U.S. But as I mentioned previously, there are a lot of options going forward here. This includes at other feedstocks, includes um, sugarcane in Brazil and sugar beets in the EU. Certainly as cellulosic materials come on, that will greatly expand where we can go regionally with this. But beyond that, C3's technology is actually a platform technology. So not only can we produce propane from sugars, we can also produce other common commodity products such as propylene or ethylene from sugars. And to give you an idea of what these markets look like, they're also very large. Propylene in the U.S. alone has a market size of north of $20 billion, and ethylene has a market size north of $30 billion. So certainly we have a lot of optionality going forward, um, but right now we are concentrating in the lab to bring our first production process to the market. So with that, thank you very much for your time, and we hope to see you out in the poster boards here.